Thank you so much for joining. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sohan Sahu. I take care of operations, regulatory, and technology side. We are basically a private limited company registered in Mumbai. We have R&D offices, one in Bangalore and one in Bremen, Germany. Uh, we are basically a device manufacturer for infertility solution. Currently, we have two products in the market. One is the self-insemination kit named We Consume. And the other is the sperm washing centrifuge and a wash. Okay. So, talking about the uh, sperm washing. So, basically, there are three methods in practice at present. Mm -hmm. Simple wash, swim up and density gradient. Right. And the choice of method depends upon two factors. One is the uh, quality of the sperm and the other is the intended procedure like IUI, IVF or ICSI. For example, if I talk about ICSI, then we just need few sperms. Ideally, we just need one. So we use any method of sperm washing. We get desired number of sperms. But then if we talk about IUI, there we need maximum recovery of the live motile sperm. And if the quality of the sperm is not normal, then definitely we need a method called density gradient method. Because among these three, the density gradient method gives highest recovery. Okay. So I'll show you uh, how the density gradient works first. So basically what we need is a media kit like this, density gradient media. Mm -hmm. So low density, high density, and culture medium. 1 ml, 1 ml, 5 ml. Okay. So to do the procedure, uh, what else we need is uh, the centrifuge tube, conical bottom, and then we need a pipette like this. So uh, just for demonstration purpose, I have prepared a dummy media uh, by adding sugar and blue color into plain water. And I will be using water as a low density. The process is like this. We first take the high density. Like this. Mm -hmm. So this is not a problem. The problem comes when I try to make layer of the low density. Like this. So to get a layer, I need to do this very slowly, drop by drop. Like this. Release one drop, allow it to go there, spread, make a layer, mm -hmm. then release second drop, third drop, like this. So to get a layer, I need to do it very slowly. Otherwise, if I try to do it faster, like this, for example, if I just release it with normal speed, like this, then what will happen? It will simply go there and mix up. You won't get a layer. Mm -hmm. So yes. this is the problem. When we are doing sperm washing and doing IUI, we are constrained with time from both the ends. Starting side, ending side. Starting side, roughly 20 to 25 minutes, we need to allow, after we collect the sample, we need to keep the sample in the room temperature for 20 to 25 minutes. So that is already gone. Without that, I cannot process the sperm. Okay. So that is already gone. And the best practice is within one hour from the point of ejaculation, I should complete the washing as well as insemination. Okay. Otherwise, what will happen? As the time passes, sperms will start dying. Mm -hmm. That will have two consequences. One, we get less number of sperms. And second, the dead sperms start releasing free radicals known as ROS, reactive oxygen species, which in turn damage the adjoining sperms, Achha. which is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we should complete all the procedures on time. Mm -hmm. So... I have a question. Uh, 20, to, 20 to 25 minutes rest once the ejaculation. Yeah, so, so basically, uh, in that time, uh, so when the sample is collected, it is thick, viscous. Mm -hmm. So that is at certain temperature, right? The body temperature. Mm -hmm. When we keep it in room temperature outside the body, it actually gets liquefied. It okay. becomes thinner. Okay. Then only I can process it. I cannot immediately process it. Okay. Okay. Right. So, to solve this problem, we have come up with a new design of tube, which looks like this. 
Okay. As you can see, this is the conventional tube, and this is the one designed by us. You can see the difference at the bottom. So the tip designed by Subhak has got a more uh, pointed tip. Yes. So this, this is designed by us and we have got patent also for this design. So we have this tube and then we have a cap integrated with a tube which is inspired from IUI cannula, the side opening cannula. Mm -hmm. So I put it like this and then I do layering with the help of the syringe, not with the help of pipette. Okay. And then we have reversed the sequence also. Earlier, I was taking the high density first, yes. the blue color one. Yes. Now I'll be taking the lower density first. Okay. okay. So I take the low density. I hope you can see the layer. Yes. So this is my problem anyway. So now I take the high density. Okay. Oh, so I see what's happening. So what is happening is, mm. you can see a clear, distinct layer, right? Yes. On the top, you see a water that is basically the low density, and the blue color is high density. Yes. Okay. So this way, the layering becomes very easy, quick, and accurate. Okay. This is not dependent upon the operator. Yes. I do, you do, or anyone, even without training does, he or she will get the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. So this way, medial layering is done. Low density, high density, medial layering is done. Now I remove the cap. Now I have to take the liquefied cement. Mm -hmm. So that I take with the help of pipette. So that being viscous, so I don't have to do drop by drop. So I take it with the help of pipette and then release it over the wall at this angle, 45 degree. Okay. Not directly. I don't have to do drop better, but I don't, I, I have to do it slowly, normal mm -hmm. speed. Like this. this way, my preparation is done. Mm -hmm. Now I put this normal closing cap, and then comes the machine. Mm -hmm. So typically in the market, uh, the centrifuges are already available, right, for years. So the machines, uh, those are available. Those are kind of general purpose sanitizers, which we use for processing blood, urine, semen, or for that matter, any mixture of fluid. Ours is a special purpose sperm washing sanitizers. And when I say special purpose sperm washing sanitizers, means this is designed as per WHO guideline. Okay. And when I say WHO guideline, so basically it's a G value, okay, the RCF, which is important. So this is designed keeping the RCF value in mind, okay? And we have processed variety of samples and concluded on one set of parameters, which gives me highest recovery, okay? And this machine works on density gradient method. This is called the fixed rotor type design. I can do one wash at a time. Mm -hmm. So in one side, I take this tube with sample, mm. and on the other side, there will be a balancer tube. Mm. Okay. And then I have to just close the lid, lock it. There will be a power supply from here. Mm. And then now I have to just press the button, this button. Mm. The parameters are already preset, pre programmed. I have to just press the button. When I press the button, it runs at a specified RPM for specified time. And mm -hmm. that time is 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, it will automatically stop. And then what happens? Going back to the conventional. So as a result of centrifugation, the live motile sperm being heaviest in the mixture gets settled at the bottom. Yes. That's the centrifugation process, which we call pellet. And only that is of use. Yeah. Rest is actually a garbage which lies over the pellet, which we call supernatant. So we need to discard the supernatant. Okay. So for that, again, what I have is this pasture pipette. So I try to discard it this way. Mm. So again, I have to be careful. Otherwise, I may mix up 
or I may not be able to fully discard the super netain, or I may be discarding the pellet, which is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. So to overcome this, in our method, what we have? So we just take it out from the machine. Remove the cap mm -hmm. and then just do this. As simple as that. Yes. You see the pellet? Yes. So the pellet gets trapped because of vacuum. And this is possible in this design only. Okay. Okay. Because of the design. So you get the pellet. So density gradient is a two step process. Step one is done. Mm. Now I go for step two. So for that, I add one ml of culture medium, one ml of this, mm. mix it, put it back into the machine. Balance the water level on the other side, place the lid, lock it. Now press the button. Now when I press the button, it runs for five minutes. Okay. After five minutes, again, it stops. And then I repeat the same, take it out, discard the supernatant, and then I get the final pellet, which so is what, ready for IU. What is the second step for? It's to... It's basically further purification of this pellet. Okay. There may be some some uh, supernatant or the media left over, which basically I am trying to filter out. Okay. So it's further purification. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this way, since I am able to do layering very easy, quick, and accurate, same way discarding is easy, quick, and accurate, I get better recovery as compared to the conventional process. Even we have got third party validation also, which claims that. Our process gives at least twenty percent better recovery than the conventional process. Okay. So this is how it works. Thank you so much. <laughs>